Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about five automations that I believe that everyone should actually have running on their Home Assistant. Even if you don't use Home Assistant, most of these, and I say most of these, are quite straightforward, so you should be able to do them on different platforms. But there's going to be a few in particular that really leverage Home Assistant's power. And if you're not into Home Assistant yet, you probably want to find out a bit more. There's a link in the description down below for my free Home Assistant course. Let's get straight into it and let's roll the intro. When you're starting out with your smart home journey, the first thing is to get buy-in from everyone else in the family. This automation will help you achieve that. Our first automation is the fridge is open. It's a straightforward one, but let's look at how we can do it. What you're going to need to do is a fridge, which I hope everyone has, and a contact sensor. I'm using an Akara Zigbee contact sensor in this example. Go navigate to settings, scroll down and go to automations and scenes and click the button create automation. I'm going to show you one I already created. So go, I'm going to go on to search, search for fridge and I'm going to click on it so I can edit it and we can walk through what I actually did. Automations in Home Assistant are based on three parts, triggers, conditions and actions. You're going to start with the trigger. So triggers, what's going to start the automation? You would click on add trigger and go to state. You can see this sort of uh, little triangle symbol. Once you've clicked on it, you'll have this blank canvas to fill in. I'm gonna show you the one I already filled in previously. So you want to give this a name. So this name here is gonna be the name of your contact sensor. So the cool thing is that as you type, you can actually see the uh, contact sensor and it's easier identified by this little fridge icon in my example and you can see it over. So click it and this entity now will give you uh, a few options. So you'll have this uh, closed and open. So as you can see, it will prompt you with the values that you need to use to set this up. Now, um, for when you test this, I probably recommend you putting maybe five seconds. Why have we got five seconds? So we don't want to avoid someone just opening the fridge every time they open the fridge, get an alert. So the four is the duration of time in which this event is occurring. So for how long it stays open, basically in simple terms. Maybe perhaps you wanna set it as five minutes. So once you've got that done, I'm going to delete this example. You can do that with three dots, uh, delete, and you can delete triggers and you can collapse them with this little arrow uh, button and you can see it now it's pointing downward because you can expand it. In the action section, conditions are optional. You don't have to put them all the way, but today we're gonna to talk about one example where we do use conditions. Actions, send notifications. So the simplest thing that I can think of is that it just send a notification to your phone. To achieve this, you just need to install Home Assistant on your phone and just enable notifications in that regard. Uh, so you would click add action and you would click this little bell uh, icon call service. So I'm gonna show you one that I already pre-filled in. So this uh, notifications, what, how you get to this, just type in notifications um, and then you will get various options. So it depends if you've got uh, many devices in your home. Um, what you can do, that there are more complex ways of doing it, but this video we're gonna keep it dead simple. So I just suggest just do one phone at a time Put your message in on the message. A title is a little title. And then there are other options that we can explore. And if you are want to know more, let me know in the comment section below and I'll support you. Um, and in the blog post, you'll find more information. Also, that's linked in the description where you'll also get uh, some of the YAML code that is behind it so you can compare it. So what's this YAML code that I mentioned? Well, YAML is just a configuration code that Home Assistant uses. So here we're using the user interface, but if you want to switch to YAML, you can go on the three dots and edit in YAML and you'll see the whole YAML code. So if you want to do the copy and paste code, you can just blank it out, paste the code in. And then the nice thing is that you can always switch back to visual editor so that you can see it in this way. So it's sort of easier for you to use. This is really, Interesting, for example, if you want to like export um, your setup and send it to me in a comment section or on Discord or any anyone else, right? Um, it's good to know that there's an option to create the code that's behind what you're doing. So once you've got all of that done, you need to press the save button and um, go and test it out yourself. The first thing you can do to test it out is three dots run. This will only test the action part, it won't test the trigger part, hence you need to probably uh, take care of that also. This second automation is uh, nice to have. It's a nice thing when you come back home, 
you get a nice little personalized welcome message. I'm gonna show you how I'm achieving this. So the first thing to do is add trigger and as before use the state. I'm using an entity and I'm using myself. I can see that I've got a person.geo, so that's me. So whenever I uh, return home, so technically the status values are not home and home, and you can see them from over here, but when I click on it, it actually gives you only home and away and available unknown. These are the friendlier names for you to understand, but in the background, it's using not home and home. In fact, if you go on the three dots and add it in YAML, you'll see that it uses those uh, values that it uh, sort of tells you of. You can change also this if you don't like this name. So you can like rename it and say, when Geo changes from away to home, that's not gonna really affect anything. These names are just for you, Root. So once you've got this set up, you will put something around here. So I am creating a text-to-speech. So this will play some sound from a speaker. Uh, and I'm using Nabucasa services. There are other ways that you can do this. Nabucasa is a paid cloud uh, subscription, uh, really, you know, sponsored by Home Assistant or built by Home Assistant, right? So if you're into it, you're certainly gonna be supporting the community and the uh, project as a whole. You get a lot of benefits, obviously. And there's a dedicated video that I made quite some time back or, or around this. So you might wanna consult it. I might pop it up on the screen if I remember. Regardless of that, what you do is you click, uh, you search for TTS on the call service and then you pick your uh, speaker. So you have, you need to have your speaker integrated. I'm uh, picking this uh, HomePod and I'm just gonna say, welcome home, simple message. We're gonna use this again. Um, you can set languages like different accents. So if your, um, you know, your particular language is different and you can set the language that will help it to give it the actual real intonation and accent, right? So save that and you're good to go. Another thing that I would suggest that you do is look at, for example, turning some hallway lights on. Third alternation is preheating or pre-cooling your home, depending on your distance relative to your house. So let's say, for example, that you are 100 kilometers or 100 miles away from home, and then you start traveling towards your home, that might take you two hours or whatever to get home. So you, what you want to say basically is, if I am traveling, so if my geolocation of my device tracker is moving towards my uh, GPS longitude and latitude location, then I am traveling towards a location. And you can use that to trigger automation. So what are we gonna do, for example, say, if my distance is getting shorter and shorter and goes below a threshold, then I can start preheating or pre-cooling depending on which climate you live, your house. This is a little bit more complex, so just ask questions if you're struggling. File editor is uh, what we're gonna be using, or Visual Studio Code. Basically, you need access to your configuration.yaml file. In anywhere in the configuration.yaml file, you need to uh, copy and paste and write these uh, things in as exactly as they are. Don't um, change the spaces, don't change anything. There's only one thing you need to change. And this device tracker, you need to use the device tracker that's relevant to your own uh, system. So if you use Visual Studio Code, it will auto complete and give you that information. The tolerance is 50 and the 50 is uh, based on the units of measurement. So uh, it could be 50 meters, 50 miles, uh, 50 kilometers, five kilometers. After this video, I'm gonna be also testing it in the field. So if you wanna find out more like how well this actually works, the proximity sensor, to remember to like this video to uh, spread it around, but also really subscribe to the channel and comment and let me know down in, in the section down below if you actually want to see a proximity video sensor uh, review in more detail. So anyway, so once we've created this proximity sensor, if we go, uh, you're going to need to save and then restart your home assistant instance. To restart, go to settings, system, and then click restart on top here. Now, once you're in your de developer tools, that allows you to just uh, understand what uh, values uh, you have. You will have this new thing called proximity.home and a value. So state will be, depending on your unit of measurement, the, the distance between where you're currently at and the location that you're using. So you don't have to use your home. Once you've got all of that set up, at this stage, you're ready to create your automation. So you go back to your automations and scenes, you click create automation, you start with an empty automation, you go to trigger. So you do something very similar to what we did previously. I'm gonna show you an example of one I did already. Coming home, preheating. So if I can click this. What you need to do is, is use that proximity sensor that you created. This time we're using the numeric state. So you can see it's one, two, three. We're not using the actual state. 
and say when it drops under 100, and it's an arbitrary figure depending on what units of measurement you're using, then we are also using the condition. And in this condition, we're using the state condition, which is this uh, button over here. And in the condition, we're saying that we want the direction of travel attribute to be towards. So if you go to the documentation, you can see that the direction of travel can assume not set, arrive towards, away from, which is the opposite of towards, uh, unknown or stationary. And you use that to really uh, customize this proximity sensor. So it will be, you don't have to be in that status for one minute, and then at that point, you can just use your climate sen sensor to set, for example, a desired temperature, right? So you can control whatever you want. You can do many things, right? you know, not just this, but this is the third example. I hope you enjoyed it. Let's move on to the fourth must have automation that everyone should have. This next one here is gonna be a bit of an energy saving feature, turning all lights off at the same time with one automation. Let me show you how we can do this. So the starting point could be a time or it could be like no one's home. But what I'm doing over here is something a little bit different just to demonstrate. So at 2 a.m. I just arbitrarily turn all lights off in case there's any like little LED light, something that just stays on for some reason. This is a catch-all uh, thing that you can actually do. So you can uh, click on a calendar, for example, if you want to do it like based on some sort of calendar event. So click add trigger and you should have your time or time pattern. And you can just put like a fixed time. So you could say this is like hours, minutes and seconds. So like something like this would be 2 a.m. And you can actually see it over here. So when the time is equal to 2 a.m. And then we're going to put this turn light off all. But all you know you sort of can't type it so if you're trying to do all with the entities and this i'm not able to type it maybe i'm not on the right version or latest version but the thing you can do is you can go on three dots editing yaml and you can add this you only need it once actually you can add this dash all under the entity id and then if you save it and then you go back to your three dots here to your visual editor you'll see this little all thing and then you test it out, it should work. It works at least for me. I will be curious to know if it doesn't work for you and why, but you can just go three dots, run, and the lights will all turn off and it will be uh, super great for your energy bills. The last automation of today is more around a bit of security, scaring people off. A bit of a disclaimer, don't use this just for your, as your own means of security to protect your home. Uh, I created this automation called the police are on the way. This is the first automation that has two triggers. This demonstrates the point, you can have more than one trigger in an automation. What these triggers are doing, exactly what it says on, on the bar. From off, uh, this kitchen motion center has a, a off and on, and we got for 10 seconds, so we need at least 10 seconds of motion for us to classify that as a relevant motion uh, activity. Then we have the patio do doors being from closed from off to open slash on. And I put no time limit here because if someone opens the door, closes it, you don't have like, it has to be open for 10 seconds. You don't, that's not this use case. Um, so if the patio sensor changes status, then you assume someone's open the door. And then the similar to what I showed you earlier in, in the video about text-to-speech and uh, vocal messages. Uh, I have something quite similar to like this menacing message, the police are on the way, and you can put the volume up, you can flash lights, and there's all sorts of things that you can actually do in Home Assistant to achieve this. But this is sort of, because it's sort of a beginner video, give you some ideas, I'm keeping it simple. One thing you can do, uh, instead of doing loops, uh, you should just do come wild copying and pasting, and then in that way, the speaker will constantly keep uh, saying the same message. Other methods people have used is just record a long MP3 uh, message or some sort of siren that goes on for like 10, 15, 20 minutes, and then have the speakers play that. There's a lot of options with what you can achieve with a home assistant, basically. So this wraps up this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you wanna learn more about home assistant, you wanna learn everything that I know about home assistant, there's my courses section down below. You can start for free with the Home Assistant version and then you can enroll in the membership. You can either go for a monthly option or a lifetime bundle. You can learn a lot of things like Home Assistant, but not only networking, building a media server, Plex, even how to fly a drone. But I'm gonna leave you with a video here on YouTube also to watch. I'll see you in that one. Ciao.